When I was in Israel in 1978, everyone was mad over Aussie. They say, oh, every Israeli, they love the American uh, basketball player Aussie. And it took this long for him really to get recognition outside. I mean, you made a movie on the map, but it took this long to get recognition. What made you, uh, what drove you to, to uh, express the story of this uh, tragic character? So I, I knew Alsi like you did for 45 years because he really changed the country and he became an icon and when he and Tommy became the power couple and then the whole story became even more <laughs> amazing with everything that happened in his personal life and with drugs and I mean you could not write a story like this. It really is the reality that made it such an amazing story. And at some point, I knew that when I came to the United States, I want to bring some amazing story that I grew up with, and that was Aussie. So I started to write it as a feature film, and as a narrative movie. And at the end of the day, uh, I got some money to make a documentary about him. And uh, I'm very happy that we screened it last week. Uh, we, ex we expected 200 people, 500 came and the reviews were fantastic, LA Times wrote about it, and so I'm very happy about um, the way people are realizing who Ossie Perry was for us, because he was really a legend, and uh, I'm happy that, you know, there is a story that you think will resonate to the American audience, and it does. When it does, it's, it's, it's a real joy. Oh, yeah. So, at the time of Ossie's fame, he was the only Kushi in Israel. I mean, it seemed like, and I say that not in a, in a derogatory sense, he, he was the only black, he, he was uh, uh, an exception. Yeah. And he was known to be the first African-American that uh, got famous in Israel, even though he wasn't, but he was known to be. And because of the love story with Tami ben -Ami, which was the top model of Israel, they became the first power couple, so he was famous not only from basketball. And it is at the time that there is only one channel, everybody is watching. So imagine for Israel, he was like Michael Jordan and Kareem Abdul Jabbar rolling into one. He became immediately a legend. So, you know, I knew that it's an unbelievable story. Then what happened later with the drugs, with him being 10 years in jail, and then coming back to Israel and believe me I'm not spoiling too much because there is so much more to the story I, I, I just wanted to make justice with the story that I knew and make a good film uh, that people will laugh will cry that's what I want to do you know that's what I'm trying to do so I'm, I mean I'm happy that the reaction was like that and uh, I can't wait to do more with the story <laughs> now that we're writing the, the narrative version of this. When people allege that Israel's an apartheid country like South Africa, and uh, ironically now with the Ethiopian immigration, what percentage of uh, Israelis' population is now African? I mean, that's, you know, pretty ridiculous to accuse Israel in, in, in that matter. Uh, by all means, I can say it as an Israeli, Israel is not perfect. However, you know, Israel is the only democracy, you know, in the Middle East. And uh, it's very inclusive. And, you know, Ossie Perry in his childhood, he faced racism here in the United States. What he saw in Israel that people didn't judge him by the color, uh, but be he became, you know, a, a superstar and he became the first power couple to be a biracial uh, a, a couple. So, I mean, uh, I, 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 I don't even think that... Uh, People that say those claims really know what Israel is all about. And that's why I have a foundation called On The Map Foundation, bringing in inspiring stories from Israel. And um, I'm, I'm happy that when people see uh, Olsi and we're touring now in universities, we were just in Stanford with a movie. And in Stanford University, we just came back. In Northern California. From that Northern California, exactly. And we're going to do so much more tours over there. In, in, in other campuses, people do see the real, the real truth story that's coming from Israel, and that's really not what you hear in the news. And it's fun to to bring it because no matter what side of the politics you are, 
you know, uh, I can say that, you know, Israel really is a, a shining light in, in the Middle East. Again, I don't say it has nothing, it has no faults, it's not perfect, nothing is perfect. We as Israelis are the first to say that. With that, you know, we are the first to allow to say those things uh, in some places in the Middle East because we're a true democracy. So on the panel, it was discussed, the panel that uh, was just presented here with uh, uh, TV producers and uh, uh, program sellers, people who sell Israeli programming, uh, when I say uh, TV shows, into the foreign markets. But even in the United States, and the, the point was raised that for show producers, show producers are not necessarily designing Israeli TV shows only for the domestic Israeli audience, but now for international markets. Do you suppose that they might be watering down the realities of the problem in order to make it seem more uh, equal? The idea that, uh, that uh, the Palestinian narrative has equal uh, authenticity or uh, legitimacy of the claims against Israel, for instance, you think that that, that the uh, attitude of the uh, of the program buyers, who are l typically largely liberals, may feel uptight about putting down putting up uh, anything that that makes the uh, jihadists look bad. I, I I don't think so. You know, for me, I mean, as an Israeli filmmaker living now in the United States and working here and making movies here. I never heard anyone telling me make the film more like that or more like that. They just really think about the story. You know, they want to make a great story. And if it's my colleagues, you know, uh, uh, Danny Sirkin that made the wonderful Tehran, you know, he just wanted to make a great drama, great story. So I never faced that. Uh, uh, you know, I have to say that I worked with HBO, with Lionsgate, with Disney. I've never had that experience. I think they all want to make something that will be fascinating, entertaining, captivating. And I have never been in a situation that told me, somebody told, oh, you know what, I don't like it because that puts Israel in, in a bad light. I can say that, you know, on the map, for example, that is a really inspirational film and very positive story from Israel. And also got great reviews at the LA Times, New York Times. Uh, Wall Street Journal, The Hollywood Reporter. So when, when it's good, it's good. You know, it's like uh, movies are like food. So when the hummus is good, you eat it, you like it. That's it. So there is not left and right. And if it's not authentic and somebody maybe want to try to make it like that, I know if it doesn't come from some, somewhere truthful, uh, maybe the audience will feel it. But they will feel it if, if you're American, if you're Palestinian, or if you're in Israeli. You know, so I'm happy that there are good stories that will come from Iran, from Palestine. I, I've, I, I have no problem with it, and I will tell you more than that. I said it on stage when we showed Olsi and somebody asked about some movies that Israelis do and don't show Israel in the best light. And I said the strength of Israel is that I, I said that story. That I, I had an intern from Syria that he held the camera and he was killed because he wanted to show what is really happening in Syria. And in, in Israel, if you are criticizing the government, you know what the government will do to you? Nothing. No, they'll give you money. <laughs> they'll give you money to, 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 to criticize them, themselves. It shows you how confident Israel feels about their narrative, again, without it being perfect. You know, but if, it, if you have a liberal media uh, department, like uh, who's making the grants, and a, and a, a conservative uh, administration, the liberals are happy to give you money to embarrass the conservatives, right? In Israel, I I never faced in any shape and form that I got money from the government and they told me what to do. Never ever had anyone saying. Even even cutting one frame because of an agenda, you know what? Honestly, I'm very lucky. I don't remember even anyone cutting a frame of mine. You know, they just can say, you know, that moment, you know, on, on the, after 20 minutes, it was a little bit boring. I, all those things. But this is a team of people that are working and just are trying to bring a wonderful, positive 
hopefully, what I'm trying to do, bring inspiring stories. So uh, I know there are a lot of theories out there. I, I, as a filmmaker myself, personally, Danny Menkin, that worked here in the United States and in TV shows in Israel, with the government, without the government, I never faced that at all. <laughs> but you didn't make political movies. I never made a political movie, but I can say that Dolphin Boy is a movie about an Arab kid that shows some coexistence side of Israel. It was not polit political at all. It was about post-trauma, about rehabilitation uh, in the Dolphin Reef. Never had any issue or any shape or form of somebody telling me anything but just Danny, what do you think and how do you make it? And I made this film with my partner, Jonathan Nier, and we had the complete freedom to do whatever we want. And we are happy that it shows uh, the coexistence side of Israel. You know, we, we, but, but, but that's what we see, you know, most of 95% of the time when we walk on the street, that's what, it, what exists. So if there is one or two percent incidents there and that's what you hear in the news, that you need to ask the news why, why, why they protect Israel that way. And, and if we can make something uh, that will inspire people to love our country because we love it, you know, great, you know. Are you concerned that uh, TV channels in different countries might not show Aussie because it, it depicts Israel in a favorable light? No, because it's a personal story. It's a great basketball story. It's a great love story. It's a story about redemption. It's a story about fighting addictions. It has so many layers that I don't think that will happen in any case. They will judge it by, 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 by what it is. And if, if it's a good story, they'll take it. I mean, you know, Maccabi Tel Aviv is one of the biggest representatives of Israel. And when they win, they get a lot of respect in Europe, in some countries that you may assume don't like us, possibly, or maybe vote against us. But, uh, you know, you can, people can say that we're naive, but we are creators, so our job is maybe to also be naive. But when I bring a story, and I saw, you know, you got, I mean, on the map, got incredible reviews in Wall Street Journal, Hollywood Reporter, and LA Times. So HBO bought 39 pounds of love, and it's, a movie that is very inspiring from Israel. So, I mean, I think at the end of the at the end of the day, we need to do a, a good movie. It's like it's like what I told you before. It's like I'm opening a restaurant. If the food is not good, they're not going to eat it. But if it is good, they'll eat it, even if it comes from Israel. Well, if they get to see it, if they get exposed they'll to it, it, but we'll make it good. If you make it good, you'll, you'll they'll see it. You make it good, but but very often the the program uh, acquisition people in cable channels in different countries might be prejudiced against an, an Israeli movie because where it comes from, or the filmmaker. You know, the truth is, is the matter is that it's the opposite because Israel's cinema is booming, you know? So you see, it's, it's all over the world. I mean, Dolphin Boy was sold for more than 20 countries around the world. Our co-producers were France, Germany, and we, I mean, it went all over. And uh, Disney wanted to make an adaptation uh, out of it. So, I mean, it was just an inspiring story. That's it. Where can people see, all see, your new release? They can go to heyjudeproductions.com. Hey Jude? Hey Jude, like the Beatles song, uh -huh. productions.com. Contact, contact us and we'll let them know how can, you can watch them. You can support our non-for-profit to tell inspiring story from Israel uh, on the MAP Foundation and be in touch with us. That's the best way to watch. If you want to put a link on the YouTube below, uh, it's heyjudeproductions.com.